My name is Dr Catherine Hughes from Crime Psych. In today's video, I'm going to be examining the case of Levi Belfield and attempting to highlight some of the psychological mechanisms that were involved with his offending. Levi Belfield was a prolific rapist and murderer and he carried out several offences around London. He was charged and convicted for his crimes in about 2004. However, it was later discovered that he had committed earlier crimes than the ones he'd been convicted for. As with all of the psychological analysis videos that I do, I'll begin by taking a look at where he grew up and what daily life would have been like for him and some of the possible factors that could have impacted on his behaviour. Media reports on Levi Belfield say that he's of Romani descent and he's very proud of his Romani gypsy roots. He's got two brothers and either one or two sisters. Some of the different sources on their list, one or two sisters. He was brought up on a South West London council estate. He was brought up by his mother and his father, but his dad died of leukaemia when Levi was eight. His mum was very strict and a very domineering woman, uh, but he was very close to her. And she's been described as a strong-willed matriarch type character, and he did visit her regularly. Throughout all of the sources that I've checked on Levi Belfield, they all say that he's a very violent man with a hatred or a disregard, at least, for women. He's fathered a total of 11 children with several different women. The three youngest were, were with his most recent ex-girlfriend. All of his ex-girlfriends have said that he was aggressive and abusive towards them. It's also been reported that he had an unhealthy obsession with young schoolgirls and school uniforms. In fact, while he was under police surveillance, he approached and made highly sexually provocative comments to two young girls who were aged just 14 and 16 who were stood at a bus stop. But that evidence was judged to be too prejudicial for the jury to hear in his case. Former partners had told police that he used to ask them to dress up in school uniforms, which they declined to do. He would think nothing of driving around and leering at, at girls in school uniforms and shouting abuse at these girls. Levi Belfield was a known troublemaker and he had convictions for burglary, assaulting a police officer, theft and driving offences amongst others. By 2002, he had nine convictions and had spent about a year in prison for them. Belfield is a highly dangerous predator and uses violence habitually. I'm not going to describe all of the rapes and murders in detail here, as there are already plenty of websites with that information available. What is worthy of note, though, is how he treats women in general. He has very little empathy for women. And this is probably because he sees them not as human beings, but as objects to be manipulated and used for his own needs. Levi Belfield had a hatred of all women, but in particular women who dyed their hair blonde. I haven't been able to get to the bottom of how this hatred will have evolved over the years, but he's either observed and learned to treat women in this way, or these women all represent an individual who's hurt or harmed Belfield in some way. It's possible that in an early relationship, and this might not necessarily be in an intimate relationship, that Levi Belfield was so deeply hurt by somebody, he developed a hatred for a particular characteristic that a person has or had. In fact, the Guardian newspaper suggested that his violent obsession with blondes has its roots in an incident when he was just 12 years old. He had a 14-year-old girlfriend called Patsy Morris, who was blonde, and she was found strangled on Hounslow Heath. And it is entirely possible that at the age of 12, and this being his first love, it would have evoked very deep emotions with him and, and emotional ties between them. When she was found murdered, it's possible that he held on to her, he, he held her, sorry, on some sort of a pedestal. And he's seen those who, in his mind at least, dyed their hair blonde to imitate her as completely disgusting. 
Now, of course, there's no real way for me, for me to be able to tell this for certain without an in-depth psychological assessment. Despite lacking obvious physical charm, he thought of himself as somewhat of a, a ladies' man with the gift of the gab. He had a wheel clamping business and he also worked the club as a doorman. And that doorman job gave him opportunities to pick up girls. It suggested that in one instance, um, he gave Roe Hypnol to one young girl who was out clubbing before raping her. And when the girl's mother rang the mobile, he boasted about what he'd done to the mother. With all types of relationships, Belfield was able to turn on the charm in the beginning, though, to lure people into trusting him, to liking him, to getting girls into bed. However, he almost always turned violent, controlling and manipulating once he had the opportunity. He bragged to old school friends online about how well he was doing. He played up his ladies' man image and described, him, described himself as being a bit flash and saying that he thinks he's 18 going out clubbing in Ibiza, Tenerife, uh, but that he was doing all right, he's not in, the, in his slippers yet sort of thing. In an interview with the media, Detective Chief Inspector Colin Sutton of the Metropolitan Police, he's the one who led the murder hunt, he said that Belfield, about Belfield, when we started dealing with him, he came across as very jokey, like he's your best mate, but that he's a very cunning individual and that he's violent. He can switch from being nice to being nasty instantly. And this type of behaviour shows that he had psychopathic tendencies. Women, whether they were girlfriends or bystanders waiting at a bus stop or even schoolgirls, were all just simply objects to him. Somebody to be abused and somebody to act out against if they dared to refuse him in some way. Police investigated a number of claims from teenagers, some who were as young as 14 years old, who claimed that they chatted, uh, he chatted them up. They said that he drugged them with ketamine or offered them cocaine, then had sex with them in the back of his van. He kept a duvet in the back of his van for that very purpose. One friend who was uh, who worked with Belfield would say that he would cruise the street at nights looking for targets, looking for young girls who were vulnerable. No girl knew him by the same name. It's thought he had about 42 aliases. Within the various relationships and marriages that he had, he was very controlling, but also used charm in amongst the intimidation. Beat to officers who worked in southwest London knew him from about 20 years ago as a petty criminal and they suspected that he was a woman beater but his girlfriends never reported him. One girl did report him but then it's reported that uh, Belfield burst in to the officer taking a statement from this girl and allegedly punched him in the face. The woman as a result dropped her claim against him. As we've seen with many serial offenders, Belfield's aggressive behaviour escalated over time. He went on to attack random women who were mostly at bus stops. He also showed a sexual interest in the underage girls and in school uniforms. A man who used to work with Belfield described him as an animal. He said that he knew that he was dating one particular young girl and in a character statement that he gave to the police, but this wasn't heard in court. It's claimed that he said she was very naive. She was a naive little girl and he didn't treat her very well. Her sister was a tiny girl, 14 years old, and he told me that he'd had sex with her. I remember him saying to me on one occasion, he asked me, do you want to buy her off me? One of Belfield's ex-girlfriends claimed that she once found a magazine in a bin in their home with the faces of all the blonde women scratched out they'd been scratched out with a knife and when she confronted him he allegedly said that he hates blondes that he would go hunting in alleyways wanting to kill stab or rape women she said that belfield had told her that they were an expletive word who were not worth a bolt 
And again, this shows his complete lack of empathy towards women. And once again, this is another psychopathic tendency that is shown in his behaviour. He hung around bus stops in his car or he drove around waiting to find a lone girl. One of these girls was Amanda Jane Dowler, also known as Millie Dowler, and she was a 13-year-old girl who went missing on leaving a railway station in 2002. And her body was found in Woodlands six months later. Belfield was charged with the kidnapping and murder of Millie Dowler, as well as the attempted kidnapping of 12-year-old Rachel Cowles. Belfield refused to give evidence at his trial and he denied any involvement in Millie Dowler's death. A jury did convict him of murder though in 2011. Marsha Louise MacDonald was a 19 year old woman who died in hospital two days after being admitted as a result of being beaten over the head with a blunt instrument near a home in London in 2003. The wound he inflicted on her just after she'd got off a bus. A year later, police believe after several more attacks, he had targeted Kate Sheedy. She was the head girl at a convent school, which Belfield often drove past. She survived, but suffered multiple injuries and spent several weeks in hospital. Nearly four years later, she gave evidence against Belfield when he was tried for her attempted murder. In 2004, Belfield found out that Peter Rodriguez had been sleeping with an ex-girlfriend of his. And Belfield went to his home, battered him with a mallet until he collapsed. And as Rodriguez lay unconscious, Belfield ran off, later joining the police cordon outside to ask what had happened. And that can be a, a common trait within serial offenders. They will go back to the... Um, to, and help with searches or they'll go back to the scene or they'll ask police at the scene questions. Later that year, he killed his last victim. This time he'd been driving around the streets of Twickenham Green for an hour when he spotted Emile Delgrange. The attack was identical to Marsh's attack. Three left-handed blows to the head and no trace of DNA. Within 24 hours, though, the police had established that she might have been killed by the same person who'd killed Marsha MacDonald months earlier. Belfield reportedly confessed to the murder while he was on demand, but later retracted that. Belfield was also charged with abduction, false imprisonment of a girl called Anna Marie Rennie. She was then 17. And that was in 2001, after she identified him in a video parade four years later. He was also charged with the attempted murder of Irma Dragoshi. She was aged 39 and she was from Longford. The jury failed to reach verdicts on either of those charges, though. It is very, very clear that Levi Belfield is an extremely dangerous individual with a deep resentment of women. He's a dangerous psychopath who's able to charm ladies into sexual relationships. However, Belfield used anger, intimidation and controlling behaviour to manipulate these women. He had no compassion whatsoever for these women. He treated them like objects that had no value. Belfield was found guilty of the murders of MacDonald and Delgrange, as well as the attempted murder of Sheedy. After he was convicted, he was sentenced to life imprisonment with a recommendation that he should never be released from prison. In 2010, Belfield was charged with Millie Dowler's abduction and murder. And that predated the earliest of the other three charges by almost a year. So again, he was formally charged with each count. Belfield's second trial began at the Old Bailey in 2011, and the jury found Belfield guilty again. He was sentenced to life imprisonment the following day, and again, the trial judge recommended that his sentence, his life sentence, should mean life. Thankfully, in this case, justice was done, and this man will never be released from prison.
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope that you've learned something from this psychological analysis. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.